In early 2023, director Ira Sachs released his new highly anticipated film, Passages, to a crowd of Sundance festival goers. The film is about a married gay couple falling out of love after one of them has an affair with a woman, which you would think is quite tame compared to a lot of other romance films. However, when it came time for the Motion Picture Association of America, or the MPAA, to rate the film, they slapped a big old NC-17 onto it for, get this, a gay sex scene. This caused a fair amount of controversy between both the director of the film and the MPAA, with the director calling it, a form of cultural censorship that is quite dangerous, particularly in a culture which is already battling in such extreme ways the possibility of LGBT imagery to exist. But this is nothing new. The MPAA has a history of rating sex more heavily than violence. That is why we can have these gruesome and gore-filled films that are rated R and still be able to be shown to a sizable demographic. The MPAA has also been more lenient with heterosexual sex than with homosexual sex. And hell, they're more lenient compared to how they rate homosexual subtext. This archaic form of rating films has recently been called into question due to the rating of passages many people digging up reasons why it should be changed or just completely removed. Here, I want to discuss the history of the MPAA, its roots that are deeply ingrained with racism, homophobia, and bigotry, and ways that the MPAA can change to more fit a modern audience. The MPAA needs to change, and it needs to change fast. Let's jump right in. First, let's discuss the villain origin story. Before the 1930s, films were released to the public without any rating system or really any censorship. There were a lot of limitations with what we could accurately capture with cameras at the time, so you could see why they didn't think they needed a system or a set of rules. It was really the wild west of filmmaking. You had sex, violence, drugs, crime, but you also had beautiful stories and free expression. But after numerous Hollywood scandals, political pressure mounted on an industry that was already seen as morally dubious. So, after much discussion, William Hayes made a list of don'ts and be carefuls in 1927, which would later evolve into the Hayes Code, or the Motion Picture Production Code. This code established a set of rules that Hollywood films had to follow in order to not have their films be censored to the public's eyes. This code is important to the history of Hollywood and the film industry because it highlighted the inherent racism and homophobia that was prevalent in the industry. It was a blight, a restriction of artistic freedom. The Hayes Code is to the film industry like how Japanese internment camps were to the FDR presidency. Hang on to this thought, that the Hayes Code was a bigoted set of rules for filmmakers and how it was a crushing weight on creative freedom. We'll come back to this. The code was in effect from 1934 and was put out of its misery in 1968. This happened because in the 50s, filmmakers started getting more experimental and rebellious, pushing boundaries and getting into court battles. Since these rules only applied to American films, foreign films didn't have to obey the Hayes Code, and thus foreign films had a role in weakening the influence the Code had over filmmaking in America. The power of the Code naturally diminished from being heavily enforced to minimally enforced to dissolved. Thus, the MPAA's current film rating system was born, and along with it, a new set of ratings and a new set of problems. The MPAA originally had the ratings G for general audiences, M for mature audiences, R for no one under 16 unless accompanied by an adult, and X for strictly no one under 16. In 1970, the M would change to a GP and then PG in 1972. PG-13 was added in 1984, then NC-17 replaced X in 1990. The ages at which these restrictions were made were raised throughout the years, and now we have this current system, and it has been like this since 1996. The main reason the MPAA exists is to help parents decide what films are appropriate for their kids to watch. So naturally, the MPAA board that actually watches and rates the films are parents but information about that is kept seriously under wraps, so this is just speculation. I'll come back around to this point, but right now I want to talk about what the MPAA rates, how loose or strict it is, and why this is probably a problem, probably. 
Violence is one of the more common things that the MPAA rates. Every rating letter allows violence, though moderated for lower ratings like G and PG. PG-13 allows intense depictions of violence, and anything more extreme, realistic, or persistent gets an R rating or NC-17 rating, depending on the amount of violence. Language is probably the most common, and also the most complex. It is sometimes stated that PG-13 films only get to say fuck once, and that's it. But there are numerous movies that are PG-13 and have fuck more than once. Some PG movies have really strong language, but exceptions are made if it's historical. There's a lot of loopholes and exceptions to easily skirt this, which makes it complex to talk about. But I trust you get the gist. Drugs are limited to PG-13 and up, with exceptions being Whale Rider of all films, which was PG, and Rango, which had many instances of character smoking and it was rated PG. Nudity is, for some reason, limited to PG and up, which has several caveats. Anything more than brief nudity is required to have a PG-13 rating, and sexually oriented sex is automatically given an R rating. The only thing that isn't explicitly defined is sex, which is restricted from G-rated films, but is fair game everywhere else. I guess it's because sex is heavily dependent on the amount of nudity, but whatever. Now, a rating system that came out in the 70s, became fully evolved in the 1960s, isn't exactly the greatest method of rating movies in the year of our Lord 2023, right? Just on its face, it sounds outdated. And, and it is. But keep in mind, the rating system we have today was an evolution of the Hays Code, which is historically racist and homophobic and sexist. So, we have an old system that evolved from bigoted origins and is currently the dominant system for an entire industry. What I'm trying to say is that the MPAA's rating system is like the Articles of Confederation. The discussion surrounding the MPAA's rating system is mostly focused on the disparity in how they rate sex and nudity compared to violence. Historically, the MPAA have been lenient on rating violence, but much more strict and borderline unfair when it comes to sex. Here's an example. A lot of horror films are filled with gore. Evil Dead Rise, Hereditary, Midsommar, among others. And most of these films get slapped with a PG-13 or an R. However, take a film like Blue Valentine, which was at first rated NC-17, but was given an R rating after an appeal was made. Ryan Gosling, who starred in the film, accused the MPAA of sexism and misogyny, stating that, There's plenty of oral sex scenes in a lot of movies where it's a man receiving it from a woman, and they're R-rated. Ours is reversed and somehow it's perceived as pornographic. Something very similar is happening with queer films like Blue is the Warmest Color, But I'm a Cheerleader, and more recently, Passages. Not just with the NC-17 rating, but with all ratings. It's not limited to just queer films either. The MPAA is full of unfair ratings for queer sex, feminine domination of men, depictions of racism, really anything you can think of. Let's think about this logically. If Passages, a film that shows both gay and straight sex, gets an NC-17, then what should Fifty Shades of Grey get? That film shows a lot more than Passages, and it was still a hard R film, but it never got NC-17. Is it because Fifty Shades is between a straight couple? Maybe. But the connection is so present, how can you not connect the dots and think that the MPAA rating system is unfairly biased? NC-17 is a death sentence for films. It limits the exposure the film can get with a wide release, and major chains like AMC or Regal will refuse to show the film just for having the rating. Directors find it better to have their film be released as an unrated film, because at least that is a little better than the dreaded NC-17. For example, Terrifier 2 would have easily been NC-17 for its violence and gore. I wouldn't know, I, I haven't seen it, but, but from what I heard, it would definitely have made NC-17, but it went unrated and still made quite a bit of money from the box office. Darren Aronofsky's Requiem for a Dream was originally rated NC-17 before deciding to release it as an unrated film. And now, Iris Sachs is releasing Passages as an unrated film exclusively through MUBI. Hashtag not sponsored. As I said, this problem is not only limited to the NC-17 category. Wes Anderson has had a tussle with the MPAA with his 2023 film Asteroid City, which was originally rated R because of a brief nude scene featuring Scarlett Johansson. After an appeal, they upgraded it to a PG-13 film. Brandon Cronenberg's Infinity Pool was originally rated NC-17, but was recut and resubmitted, officially getting the rated R seal of approval. 
These two cases are most common when resubmitting a film to the MPAA. Either a film will appeal, resubmitting the same cut, explaining why they think it should have this specific rating, or they will recut the film in hopes that the MPAA takes mercy on them. And this is kind of a problem. It's like the Hayes Code, where filmmakers need to censor themselves as to not be censored by bureaucracy. The MPAA is exactly that, requiring filmmakers to censor themselves just so their films don't get shot down with a restrictive rating. This is not the only issue with the MPAA, as we've already discussed. But why is the MPAA like this? Why do they rate films with sex more heavily than films with violence? Scrolling through the list of NC-17 films on Wikipedia, we can see that a lot of films are rated more or less for sex-related content more so than violence. Of the 77 films listed on this page, at least 62, on my count, were listed as having some form of erotica, sexuality, sex, or otherwise. Around 27, again my count, were rated for some form of violence or brutality or violent images. I also included sexual violence in this list of violence, and sex. These are just the films I could get information on. The list on Wikipedia is very incomplete, but you can see this disparity in how the MPAA rates these films. If they care more about sex than violence, what does that say about the people running the rating system? A 13-year-old kid can watch an uncountable number of horror slasher films that are rated R and filled with guts and gore with a parent, but can't watch sex, something that is natural and emotional and beautiful. I'm not saying a child should be exposed to this at all. Like, I'm not saying a child should be watching sex or should be watching exploding bodies, but what would you rather have them watch if those were their only two options? A film that explores a human body in the most grotesque and disturbing ways possible, or a film that explores the human body through sexuality? Which one is honestly more beneficial? I can't answer that because I'm not a parent, nor am I a child anymore. However, as someone who would like to call themselves a filmmaker regardless of what their film teacher says about their work, I have a few ideas as to how I would personally make this rating system work for everyone involved. The parents, the creatives, the MPAA, everyone. And since I have outlined every possible problem with the current rating system, I, and by extension you, are now fully prepared to fix the MPAA's rating system. But where to begin? Let's take a look at the facts. We know that the MPAA rates film with sex much more heavily than with violence, and we know that homosexual sex is rated even more heavily than heterosexual sex. An easy fix to this is more equal representation of sex. Sex is sex, whether it is between man and woman, man and man, woman and woman, person and person. It should be treated as such with film. In terms of violence, there should be more strict guidelines to make it equal to sex. The main point of rating systems for film is parental control, but there is an apparent lack of equality in how films are rated, so in order to fix this, violence should not be looked past and should be rated with just as much of an iron fist as sex. This should naturally make ratings more consistent to each other. In terms of language, I think the guidelines that constitute language should be loosened, a bit more flexible for our changing times. I think films that are rated R for language only is a bit unfair, because I was actively using foul language since the age of 12, and most kids in school were doing it earlier than I was, because I was one of the good ones. Kids are learning faster and earlier nowadays, and the rating system should reflect that. Everything I have mentioned thus far is an effort to put every film on an equal spectrum of rating, to maintain fairness and equality, and everything I have mentioned has been guideline changes. However, there's still a very human problem in that changing a system's mechanics won't work if the mechanics are still determined and enforced by humans. In order to change the system, you have to change the people. The board should be made up of a much more diverse group of people and should not be limited to just 10 or so. 10 people cannot act as a monolith for the entirety of film culture, especially 10 straight white people. I think it should be a board of around 25 to 30 people and should be a mix of all cultures and sexualities. Think about it. If there's a film that deals with a gay couple, it would make sense to have a gay person at the table to say, hey, this checks out, or hey, this is kind of bad. It isn't perfect, I can see where this could cause some problems, but no system is perfect, and this is far better than what we have now. Finally, 
I believe a new, much clearer rating system should be put into place. G for general audiences stays in place, PG for parental guidance stays in place, M for mature audiences replaces PG-13, X replaces the R rating, and 18 plus replaces NC-17, but with a caveat. There are two categories of 18 plus, separating non-pornographic and pornographic films. Non-pornographic gets rated as 18 plus, but pornographic gets rated as triple X. This creates a distinction between the two categories and a clear separation between them. I believe this rating system is a much better and much clearer way to rate films for the general public. Once again, it is not perfect, but it is arguably better than what we have now. The future of cinema right now is at a very pivotal moment in time. SAG-AFTRA and WGA are on strike. The MPAA's non-consistency is being called into question, and everyone is tired of the bullshit. So, why does the MPAA need to change? It needs to change because we can't have a system made in the 90s dictating the films being released in 2023. It is an old system that is actively sabotaging the industry with its bias and unfairness towards art and film. It censors writers to conform to a system that is dictating their writing and limiting their stories. It hinders creative freedoms that filmmakers have in an industry that is supposed to be about expressing creative freedom. It is a contradictory system that can make or break a film, and filmmakers aren't going to take that anymore. When filmmakers risk the chance to have their film not be shown to more than a few theaters, that makes them want to create less things. It makes them release a film that opts to go unrated. It makes them feel less free to make what they want. And that is terrible. As someone who wants a career in this industry, I want to be able to make whatever I want without being censored. It happened to me constantly all throughout my school years, and I'm not about to let it happen to my films and my writing. I have very adult stories I want to express, and if I run the risk of having a rating I don't want, then I'm going to have to censor myself for a system that is unaccommodating to me as a creative. That is why the MPAA needs to change. It needs to change for our future as creatives and as filmmakers. Because we aren't going to take this much longer. WGA and SAG have had enough, and soon all of Hollywood will have enough of the bureaucracy and the corruption. And when that happens, there will be no more film industry. An era of darkness at the theater. I wish I had a more optimistic outlook about the state of the industry, but... We live in an unfair world that's against freedom of expression, against queer people, against religions that are different from your own. I am genuinely terrified of my future. But I refuse to bow down to unfair systems. I create because it makes me happy and it fulfills me. So I will keep writing and keep creating, no matter who forces me to censor myself. And I hope you, the audience, find it in yourself to do the same.